welcome back and welcome to my August wrap up. Uh, it is morning here, so I have my cup of coffee in my Enchanted Fandoms mug and I have my Wonder t-shirt on today um, because I know that today a lot of children are starting new schools or going back to schools and I'm like, well, we'll have a bit of Augie sympathy going on here. I know you can't see all of it, but as you know, Wonder is one of my favorite books. So I have my August wrap up here for you. I have everything that I read in the month of August. There are a few things that I read on just audiobook or just ebook that I don't have the physical copies of, but um, I'm going to talk about them a little bit with you now. Let's jump right in with the couple of things that I read on ebook this month. I read The Day We Meet Again by Miranda Dickinson. I did this as a buddy read with my lovely friend Hayley. This one comes out in the UK on Thursday. So if you're viewing this video as it goes up, it's going up on the Tuesday. It comes out on Thursday, the 5th of September. It's a big week for book releases this um, this week. Uh, and this one is just absolutely fabulous. If you have read some of Miranda's previous ones, this one feels really like it started with a kiss. It's just got that same mood and that same feeling. And um, if you're missing London a little bit, or you've got some wanderlust, this book just has it all. Sam and Phoebe are just awesome main characters. I'm still thinking about them now, a couple of weeks after I read it. It was a great one to do as a buddy read because Hayley and I basically just fangirled over how much we love these characters. Um, so definitely, definitely, if you can pre-order this one or if you're watching it after release date, definitely order this one. It is so uplifting, so wonderful, and it really draws you in. You really want to keep turning the pages. We were texting each other going, where are you at? I've just passed that, okay, I best keep going. It was really difficult to stop. Um, then another one that I read on ebook this month was The Girl in the Window by Rowan Coleman. This one is um, set in Pondon Hall in Yorkshire, which again, was great for me because, you know, always missing Yorkshire. And um, sort of feels very Bronte-esque. We've got a lot of Bronte influence there, our main character, she goes up to the parsonage, they're basically living in Haworth, um, and it all surrounds a lost manuscript um, which she's found, which might be linked to Emily Bronte. Um, there are, this is quite a different direction for Rowan Coleman. Rowan Coleman, um, I found her books by loving rom-com and initially she wrote rom-com and then as she's grown and evolved her books have become to um, sort of come around to tackle some more serious issues and then this one has some ghosts in it. Um, there was bits of the book that flicked back to some historical writings, some letters, diary entry type things that the main character finds and so we flick back between present day and um, these historical letters. I wasn't such a fan of the historical side of it, but then I don't normally get along with historical fiction anyway. And so that's just a personal preference. I really liked the way it flicked back and forth. And I liked the way the historical stuff tied into the modern day stuff, but that stuff just personally didn't keep me as gripped. But if you like that whole finding letters, finding clues and um, kind of flicking back and forth between something that's going to reveal a little bit more for the story that you are reading in the present day, then you'll definitely love this one. And there is a lot of substance to it. There's, it, it goes very deep. Um, I did actually end up listening to, I read half of it on audiobook, um, on ebook, and then when the book was released, I'd had the ebook pre-ordered. So I then added the audible narration so I could listen to the second half of it and the narrator does a good job of this one. Um, then I read If You Were Here by Alice Peterson, which is out now. Um, I was reading it as a net galley copy. Then I did the same thing. I bought the um, ebook because, you know, we show our author's support here. And um, this one is two parallel storylines again, which I do really, really like. It's it's one of my favorite formats and everything I've talked about so far has been two parallel storylines. Um, well, not quite parallel in the last instance, but 
This one surrounds um, a grandmother and a granddaughter and we get the story from both of their perspectives. The grandmother is living on her own. We know that she has lost her husband and her daughter and as the story unfurls we find out that she's lost her husband to Huntington's disease um, and we think that Beth the daughter probably died this as well but we're not entirely sure um, and <clears throat> Flo the granddaughter doesn't know any of this was going on and obviously it is a gene that she might inherit so then we have her kind of struggle with um, what to do about that. It, although this book kind of surrounds the fact that these people are dead and there's this disease that Flo might have, it is still incredibly uplifting and incredibly hopeful. It's one of these books that will make you want to live life to the fullest and give a little bit more time to those around you. I loved the parallel storylines and this book has um, some really wonderful secondary characters. You know when you find those secondary characters that you really connect connect with. Um, Ricky is Peggy, Grandma's neighbour. Um, I loved him. And then we have James and Maddie. Maddie is Flo's best friend and James is her brother who Flo shares a flat with. Um, and these guys are just... Yeah, again, I, you know, I read this book a couple of weeks ago and these guys have stuck with me and I love when you find secondary characters that you can really, really love like that. And then one of the last books that I finished in the month of August, I finished this right on the 31st. Um, and this was One Winter Morning by Isabel Broom which the ebook and the audiobook are out now and the paperbook the paperback comes out in, um, I think it's next month the paperback comes out. This one is, this one was just beautiful. Again, I buddy read this with Hayley. Um, this was one of those that we kind of added in at the last minute. I said, I got this from NetGalley. Did you get a copy? Um, it's coming out on Thursday. Do you want to start reading it? So yeah, it came out this past Thursday. And um, this one felt like a page two novel because we go to New Zealand in this novel, which is fantastic. Isabel Broom always takes you to different places that you weren't expecting to go. We've been to Prague, we've been to Greece, we've been to Italy. This time we're going to New Zealand. Again, we have two parallel storylines. We have Bonnie, um, who is from New Zealand and goes to London. And then we have our main character who travels from London to New Zealand. Um, and then she meets two, again, two wonderful, not secondary characters because she spends an awful lot of time with them. They are not, it, the book is not from their point of view, so I suppose they are secondary characters. We have Kit and we have Tui. Um, and there's a lot of horses in this book and quite often that can put me off because I'm not interested in horses in the slightest. But um, the horses kind of provide a vehicle for things being revealed and a vehicle for things happening in the book. It was just wonderful sort of traveling to New Zealand. This does all take place in winter, which obviously in London is cold and in New Zealand is warm. Um, and we have Christmas and we have New Year. And it's really hard to talk about this book without giving any spoilers, obviously. But um, this one is, it's just so absorbing and so gripping. I love the travel aspect. I love the fact that this isn't really about romance, it's about family and it's about some hidden things that you have to keep turning the pages to find out. It was such a good read. I am glad that I read it again with somebody else and we read it so quickly as well. Um, had I not got another cold, would have read it even quicker because um, Hayley was kind of ahead of me and I was trying to keep up and then 
blowing my nose and going to sleep and yes um but yeah so that's my ebooks i feel like i've talked about them for a long time but they had a lot of substance in my ebooks uh this month then let me get my pile organized uh let's talk about physical books first couple of physical books sorry i have my pile next to me and i have my list here as well so I have been reading, rereading the Shopaholic series. If you want to join in, we're only two books in so far. Rereading it for when Christmas Shopaholic comes out. So we've read um, Confessions of a Shopaholic and Shopaholic Takes Manhattan so far. Both of those have been a second reread for me. Um, so I have reread them before, but now I'm moving on to Shopaholic Ties the Knot, which will be on my September TBR that is a first reread for me, so just a second reading. Um, but I have both the Shopaholic books as physical books this month, and we are discussing them over on my Instagram, which is always linked in the description box below. I don't really need to say an awful lot about this series. I expect a lot of you have read them, and if you haven't, now's the perfect time to join in. You can catch up. We're reading one book a week, so if you want to catch up and read the first two books in the series, they're not terribly long. Um, you can catch up and join in our discussion. Uh, I am hosting it with another bookstagrammer over on Instagram and we're taking it in turns to host questions on our accounts. Then I read a graphic novel. Again, I read this on the last day of August and this one is Scare School um, Just Beyond by R.L. Stein. Um, I did not read an awful lot of kind of goosebumps point horror growing up so R.L. Stein to me is a bit of point romance and I've watched the Goosebumps movies um seen a little bit of the Goosebumps tv show but I wasn't terribly enthralled by that either this graphic novel is coming out on the um the 10th of September and the illustrations in this one are great I like some of the concept of the book. There is a monster in this one that's kind of a like robot monster, which I didn't like as much, but I like the school setting and I like the sort of demon headmaster character in this one. So if you do like monsters, this one could be one for you. I believe this is a middle grade graphic novel as well. So that's that then another physical book that i read that again if you're watching this as this video goes up on tuesday this one comes out on thursday and this one is the love child by rachel hall this is the proof cover which just has an advertisement in a newspaper on the cover um there's the spine for you and then it's just got the tagline on the back which is one young mother's ultimate sacrifice one child's desperate search to uncover the truth i read this in one sitting if you haven't seen my bout of books reading vlog i'll leave it linked up here because i read that in this vlog and you can see that i just started it on sunday and finished it on sunday right at the end of the readathon uh, again, we've got two parallel storylines. It's like the theme of August reading. Um, so yes, two parallel storylines. Um, this is historical fiction, but historical fiction that I was really into. The fact that it, the sort of thing uh, pulling you in is this wanted ad saying respectable married couples wishing to adopt. Um, and I just love the idea that one woman gave up her baby and then we follow her baby and eventually you know that the storylines are going to come together you know they're they're kind of catching up with each other time wise are they going to be in the same city it's very exciting very emotional and just again left me feeling good which is what i'm looking for from my reading right now really recommend this one again if you um fancy pre-ordering it i will try and leave the link in the description box below the um cover you can see if you go to my september wrap up on my blog my blog is always linked in the description box below as well but definitely definitely enjoyed that one then let's find some more physical books I should have sorted out my pile sooner. Clearly, 
Then another physical book that I did as a buddy read was No Judgments by Meg Cabot. Um, me and Bethany both got this one at BookCon. I believe we both got it signed. I think I saw her in the signing line. And we decided to buddy read this one. This one rather aptly, if again, you're watching this as it goes live, is um, set during a storm. The storm of the century is about to hit Little Bridge Isle, Florida, and it's sending waves crashing through Sabrina Bree Beckham's love life. That is the tagline for this one. Meg Cabot, of course, wrote The Princess Diaries. I saw her, I met her a couple of times at BookCon and saw her do a panel and she was absolutely hilarious. So I was very excited to read her um, adult contemporary romance. Um, we didn't love this one. Uh, the one of the main reasons that um, I think it didn't sit well with me is that the pacing was a little bit off. It felt like it took a while for anything romantic to happen and then it all happened a bit too quickly. The storm took a while to build and then a lot of the book was set after storm rather than during storm. <coughs> And then it mentions in the blurb about animals and animals being rescued by Brie and that took an, an awful long time to come. So I think if the pacing had been better, I would have enjoyed this book more because I really liked the small town aspect of it. Really, really liked that. I liked some of the romance, a little bit of the romance felt a little bit controlling, which I didn't like. Um, but I think again, if it had been paced slightly differently, that would have come off as less controlling. Um, yeah, this was a difficult one because we thought we were going to really enjoy it and it was, it was fine. It was okay. We, we read it to the end, but I think, yeah, I think if the pacing had been a little bit better. One of the things that I liked that I don't think Bethany did like was the fact that at the start of, um, a lot of the chapters you have like hur hurricane advice and stuff so that one there says avoid consuming alcoholic beverages before during and after the storm although seemingly refreshing these can dehydrate and impair judgment um i liked those things it was quite interesting for me reading those as we went through the book and i think that added to the tension of the storm which is why i was expecting more of the book to be kind of set during the storm but that was that was sort of expectation versus reality type thing okay let's move on to some audiobooks that we read let's talk about another buddy read that i did um i read got post-it stuck to it um tell me lies by carola lovering i read this with my friend jenna um and i ended up listening to the audiobook i saw that my library had the audiobook so i took it out the library even though I had the physical copy here I could check back in with the physical copy and see where I was in terms of page progression because obviously doing it as a buddy read we basically read this in two days and this is a book about lying to you others but also lying to yourself which I like the kind of mirror aspect of it um we had Lucy and we had Stephen um, and you kind of going along enjoying Lucy's story and then Stephen comes along and kind of rocks your reading world because he's not the nicest character um, and obviously we know he's going to rock Lucy's world and we see the fallout from that. This book takes place over quite a long period of time. We see them at the beginning of college and then we see them right the way up until adulthood. Um, both of us kind of wished that a little bit more had happened in this book, that there'd been a bit more of a conclusion. Um, we were worried that the book was kind of just going to end and nothing was going to be resolved in a sense. We don't want everything tied up neatly, obviously, but we wanted some resolution for Lucy, especially. And she does get some things resolved, but not the things that we wanted. And so that's where this book sort of ended up being a bit of a three star read for both of us. I think that the audiobook did a really good job because it had different narrators for Lucy and Stephen. Um, and in the beginning, I really enjoyed it because I wanted to find out what was going to happen with the two of them and was Stephen actually going to be as horrible as he seemed at the beginning. 
um but yeah it was it was another one that was a bit of all right it's a shame that i had four buddy reads this month and the two that i read with Haley were both amazing and blew us both away and the two that i read with other people were both kind of three star reads we could have done better yeah <laughs> Then um, one which was definitely not a three star read, which was a five star read, completely blew me away. I didn't know an awful lot about this book going into it. I didn't know what the subject content was, but I knew I loved this author's previous book, so I bought it. And then I ended up listening to the audiobook. Um, and this is Hope and Other Punchlines by Julie Buxbaum. Sometimes searching for someone else helps you find yourself. And again, this is a bit of a dual narrative two parallel storylines um can you tell i have a, a kind of type of book that i enjoy but this one takes place um with two people who were directly affected by 9-11 which i haven't read anything that tackles 9-11 in this way we have these two characters who were babies when 9-11 happened but it affected those around them their parents were directly involved they were in the towers um and you know in some cases they got out in some cases did they get out there's there's a lot of um reflection and again although the subject matter is quite depressing and although obviously you know, 9-11 was this uh, massive, horrible thing that killed so many people and caused so many different consequences. Looking at it from these guys' point of view is a really different take on it. It's so interesting that this author would tackle this subject matter and do so in a sort of young adult contemporary romance kind of way. Um, it just, I don't want to talk too much about it because obviously I don't want to give any spoilers, but I really enjoyed this one and I really, really recommend it. I thought it was so good. Whether you do the physical copy, which is beautiful, or whether you do the um, audio book, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Um, and yeah, was one of my favourites that I read this month. Definitely, absolutely loved it. Then I read What Red Was, um, which is, it's described on the back here. This is a proof copy, so I don't, it's got a cover stuck over another cover. And then the cover that I've shared on my blog is, I think, the UK cover. Um, again, blog will be linked if you want to look at that. It's described as a startling and sophisticated novel of modern love, sexual violence and toxic inheritance from a brilliant new voice. So this one um, follows Kate um, and we follow Kate kind of before and after an incident happens and we see how her life and her personality um, is altered by the um, incident that happened. Again, it kind of follows her from college into later life. Um, and it was it was interesting in ways. Again, I felt a little bit like the pacing was off with this one because it took a while to get to some things. The male characters in this one were all not particularly likeable, but they also weren't very intriguing. I liked Kate as a character and I was definitely rooting for her. She makes some unwise choices, but sometimes we like that in a character and it makes for an interesting read. But there was just, yeah, a couple of things that were a little bit off, like the fact that I wasn't sort of interested in any of the male characters at all. And then the fact that, yeah, the pacing was just a little bit off. Again, it was an all right read, but it was a bit of a three star read for me. The audiobook wasn't anything special. It did an all right job wouldn't highly recommend it. Um, then I read The Art of Racing in the Rain. I listened to this on audiobook. It was a good audiobook, thought they did a good job. Um, it had some music in between the different parts of the audiobook, which is always interesting when an audiobook kind of does a little bit more to make you go, yes, I would rather have the audiobook over the physical book or the ebook. Um, and I made a book versus movie video about the Art of Racing in the Rain, which I will leave linked up here. 
if you would like to know my thoughts on the comparison between the book and the film. Then another one I did just on audio that I don't have a physical copy of here. I actually did as a buddy read as well. I forgot that I had another buddy read that I did this month. Um, and that is Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey, which is about a um, woman in, again, a small town, quite like a small town read, um, unless it's like Manhattan or London, also like those. Um, and uh, surrounding a like, house improvement business. It's a bit of a romance. There were some steamy sex scenes in this book. It was, it was good. It wasn't blow me away good, um, but I did enjoy it. Um, I thought that the romance was quite nice. It's one of those where there's quite a lot of misunderstandings and then quite a lot of after sex. Um, so if you like that kind of thing, you'll like this. I am beginning to think that maybe I prefer a rom-com or romance that is um, set in the UK more than set in the US. I don't know, but the I've read kind of three romance novels, rom-coms um, by US authors set in the US this month that just haven't lived up to the rom-coms that I've read by British authors set in the UK or, you know, with the UK characters. I don't know if I have a preference there. Is that a thing? Can I have a preference for that? Um, it's it's something that I'm just like, mm, maybe I have, I do have that as a preference. I didn't realise there was such a big difference until I read, you know, a good chunk of US rom-coms this month and wasn't particularly enamoured with them. Um, then another one that I listened to that I don't have the physical book of is The Last Book Party, which is by Karen Dukes. I don't know. Dukes? Duchess? Dukes. Um, which is set in the uh, sort of literary world in New York and New York State, um, which is interesting. Again, we have a kind of young slightly impressionable girl working in publishing where the men in her life aren't great towards her um but she's kind of trying to get along she makes some wrong choices the book party itself sounds fantastic it is a book themed party where people come dressed as a character and there's a bit of a competition to work out who the characters are and there's sort of characters from more obscure novels rather than all coming as Harry Potter you know um again it was it was all right it wasn't anything particularly blow me away special the audiobook I think did a good job it was depressing in parts because things weren't quite going right for our main character um but other parts were interesting I always like things set in that kind of publishing world I think sort of having been on the outskirts of that publishing world for a little while now um and seeing the difference between you know the publishing world in London and the publishing world in New York is always interesting too um, and then I read the audiobook of one that I do have a physical copy of, and that is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. Um, this one is one of those that has a kind of full cast. The author reads a little bit of the audiobook, and then the three women in the audiobook are narrated by three different women. This is non fiction, all surrounding. Um, stories about three women and their sex lives. Desire as we've never seen it before, a riveting true story about the sex lives of three real American women based on nearly a decade of reporting. So that was interesting. Um, I did find it really interesting. Um, some of it was quite unpleasant. So there are definitely care warnings here for various different things make sure you look up the synopsis of this one before picking it up um because there are definite definite care warnings here um it was very candid and very interesting and i really enjoyed it it was definitely a solid four star read for me and i'm glad that i picked it as a book of the month pick 
Um, <clears throat> and then finally, I listened to Red, White and Royal Blue. I listened to this one just because everyone was talking about it. There was so much hype surrounding it. Anyone had read it said to me, Katrina, I think you will like this one. Um, I listened to the audiobook and maybe I should have not listened to the audiobook because a lot of this book is um, set between the UK and the US and so there was some dodgy accents going on. I found it just a little bit long. I think that's that was the reason that I didn't kind of rate this book super highly. I think it just ended up being a little bit too long. Look at the chapter headings though, they're so cool. Um, yeah, I think there's some emails in this, this book, which I always like when they're kind of sprinkled into actual narrative. I like when an author makes that choice when there's text or email conversations because you get a different take on things, a different look at things. I really like that about the book. I did like the romance going on. Again, there's a little bit of misunderstanding. Um, I understand that this book is very forward thinking in the fact that it is an adult romance, but isn't a straight adult romance. <sighs> but it didn't like fully grip me. I wasn't getting excited to get back into it. I wasn't sort of sitting in the car waiting until the end of a particular book in the audiobook or, you know, trying to catch a a listen here or there or trying to read a little bit here or there and I I think perhaps it was just the length that did it for me um I think I'm used to my romances being just over 300 pages and this one's just over 400 pages and I mean I, I know that's not the only thing that will have affected my enjoyment I think maybe the hype affected my enjoyment as well just because everyone was reading it everyone was loving it everyone was telling me I was gonna love it and so I felt that pressure to love it and I just didn't love it. I liked it. It was okay, but this isn't what I'm going to be keeping. So I only read 17 books this month. So I don't know how we're at a half hour wrap up, but we are. Um, my September TBR, I promise, will be shorter. I will not talk about the books as much as I did in this one. Um, like I say, let me know in the comments if you enjoy a little bit more analysis of the books rather than me just saying this is what I read moving on um I tried that for a couple of months in a row now so just let me know if that's what you like or I will go back to just saying I read this moving on I read this I would recommend it moving on um as always if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up do let me know in the comments as well what your favorite book that you read in August was um, I will be back with my September TBR video for you very soon. Make sure you are subscribed so that that lands in your subscription feed. I will also have movie reviews video for you coming up on Sunday and I have a book haul that I'm about to film as well. Very exciting. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you with my next video. Bye.